Hello, today I have more power banks. One is a time-tested power bank from ZMI that has been around but has some big claims about its performance. Then we have the brand new Anchor Prime power bank, the smaller one. The big one is out on back order for months and it also claims lots of watts. So we'll see if either of these can provide that power level and if either can do it for more than a few minutes without choking. I will be going through each of these power banks to see what it can do for power output, how much energy it can store, and how fast they can charge. It should be an interesting one, so join me as I get in depth on these power banks. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power bank do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors. In this video, two power banks will be reviewed to find out the charging capabilities to help you make an informed buying decision. As I slowly build up the list of power banks tested, hopefully we'll find some better ones. So that is why this video is here, to find out if these are that better power bank. If you want to help support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon, the Super button, and my website down in the description. Special thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. First up is the ZMI Power Pack Number 20 QB826G Ultra Laptop Power Bank Worldwide Edition 25,000 milliamp hour PD Max 100 watt single port Max 210 watt total. What a name! I think they could have made it a bit longer. Open the box and find another box. Oh, that's what the packaging is supposed to look like. Pull all the plastic cover and we're in. This power bank is a little more advanced in that it has both power delivery and quick charge capabilities on three ports. It can deliver 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts on the USB-C port and the USB-A port, as well as charge from those voltages on the USB-C port. This also has a PPS or programmable power supply mode of 11 volts and 20 volts. This is only three amps though, so no Samsung 45 watt super fast charging on this device. Each port can deliver 100 watts of output power, but not all at once. The claim is up to 210 watts of total output power. Hint, I wasn't able to get that much. Either input can do 100 watts on the charging side, but in reality it's a little slower than that at about 80 watts. This comes with a special USB-A to USB-C cable to be able to provide access to faster charging capabilities on the USB-A port. It does mention that you have to use this cable to get the most out of the USB-A port in the user manual, which gives a decent overview of the performance of this power bank. There could certainly be more in here like the actual usable capacity, but nope, not that anyone else does that either. This power bank is one of the first I've seen with a safety listing for both the US and Canada markets, so this is nice to see. There is a new edition and they are proud of it and they also state the compliance of it on the Amazon listing. This power bank has some big claims of compatibility and capability on the Amazon listing. This has a huge range of laptops as well as the Xiaomi fast charging method. There are like 20 different names for this charging technology, but this power bank has a 100 watt variant of it on the USB-A port if you use the supplied cable. That'll be a topic for another day. This power bank can move some power around though. If you need a short burst of 200 watts of power on two ports, you can get it from this power bank. Try to go to 110 watts on one port and it will shut down safely though. The power bank can easily empty the tank at 100 watts though. This should be a 100 watt power bank in reality since that's what it can do full time. Then it needs a little break since it overheats after depleting the battery from 100% to 0%. The power bank used a reasonable amount of energy during the charging cycle and charged moderately quickly at 1 hour and 40 minutes to a full charge and taking most advantage of a 100 watt power adapter it gets there in a reasonable amount of time. A little over the claim time but I am assuming there's some generous rounding. The reality is this is an extremely efficient power bank. At only 19% power loss at 50 watts out, this delivers almost everything from the wall to the output. This is great. It isn't far ahead of the competition, but it is ahead of the competition. Anchor has some work to do, so moving on. The Anchor A1336 Prime Power Bank 20,000 milliamp hour portable charger with 200 watt output. Again, we have the Anchor retail packaging, shelf ready. Not a lot of these companies do this anymore. It can deliver 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volts on the USB-C and USB-A port, as well as charge from those voltages on the USB-C ports. This also has a PPS or programmable power supply mode of 11 volts, but it can only do 3 amps, so again, no support for the Samsung 45 watt super fast charging. The user manual for this is not bad. It gives you some very simplified specifications, enough to know how to use it and what to expect. They do mention the double push to enable the low power mode. 
The Amazon specifications for this one are a little more vague. They go with the, it can charge basically all the devices, but lack saying it can charge them at full speed. Most of them it probably charges with the slow boat, but that's okay, a lot of these things function that way. They have a list of the other Prime devices, and there are some mistakes in this listing. Oh well, everyone makes mistakes. I know I do. The power bank can charge fairly quickly with its USB-C port. The device will charge at the full 100 watts of power for about 15% of its charge. Then it drops to 50 watts for the remaining time. This leads to about a 1.5 hour charge time. This isn't bad, but it is kind of pulling the wool over your eyes and calling it 100 watt charging. It sort of is, even though it spends most of its time at 50 watts. Then it says 100% charged on the screen for about 30 minutes while it is still charging at 50 watts, tapering to zero. So the on-screen percent charged is extremely inaccurate on this device. The power bank was not bad in terms of efficiency for both the charging and discharging cycles. The battery is probably a little under the claim capacity for the weight, which is kind of sad. We'll get to that later. But overall, this isn't a class leading device for efficiency. The ZMI is that now, but it is very high on the scale, among the best for that. It delivers a reasonable amount of energy to the output at 50 watts. As with the ZMI, if you discharge at 100 watts, which it will do to flat, it has a 5% efficiency reduction, as well as requiring a resting period from being overheated. At 200 watts, forget it. It runs for a few minutes and shuts off. Okay, time to weigh some power banks. Overall, the power banks are heavier. At about 550 grams for each of the packs, this is reasonable for the ZMI, but on the heavier side for the anchor. By comparison to the blade, it's a bit lighter for 20,000 milliamp hours, while the 140 watt anchor power bank is about the same. These power banks have very different dimensions. The Anchor I would describe as a burrito power bank and the ZMI is the more typical long flat pack. The ZMI being a larger physical battery size means the case is bigger overall. The Anchor overall was about 5.5 by 5 by 12.7 centimeters. The ZMI was about 8 by 2.8 by 18.9 centimeters. So volume wise, the ZMI is just slightly larger and heavier. The voltages all stay within the tolerances of the USB power delivery specification, which is nice to see. The power banks all had general compatibility with any chargers I used them with. Another advantage is, is that they will both charge very slowly, but still charge even with an old 5 watt USB A brick. So this is great to see. Next I checked the UPS capability or uninterruptible power supply capability of these power banks. As it turns out, the ZMI was able to keep the USB-C port operating during multiple functions on the other USB-C port. So this can keep going even when the power goes out on that other port. The issue here is that the power bank can deplete itself still since it will allow more power to flow out than in. So it isn't really a UPS and it isn't intended to be used that way, but it can keep the power going for a project. The Anchor specifically claims to not have this feature, and it does not. It turns off right away. Both of these power banks have a low power mode. With a double click, they turn on the USB-A port for several hours to charge low power devices. I had trouble in getting the Anchor to turn it off though. These power banks are well within the 100 watt hour requirement for extra non-permitted air travel power banks. These are a little heavy, but can still be carry-on power banks. The ZMI is getting closer to the limit. These power banks can discharge fast. That is the big difference here between these and cheaper power banks. The power output is high if you need it, but it won't stay on for a long period of time. I got about five minutes of runtime on the anchor at 200 watts before it shut down. ZMI is better, but it struggled with power negotiation to get to 200 watts in the first place. It never got to the 210 watts and can't do that on the USB-C ports. You have to use the supplied cable with the USB-A port and the USB-C port to get there. At 100 watts, still discharged to flat though. The thermals on these power banks were reasonable. They got warm for sure, and they had a few hot spots, especially around the USB port end, where the electronics are. The anchor got pretty warm during the discharge. The lower the wattage on the output, the cooler it'll be. The charging temperature was more reasonable, but that is because it throttles pretty hard to about 50 watts after a few minutes. It does 100 watts of input, but not for very long, so you'll be able to get maybe 10 to 15% of the charge at 100 watts, then it drops to 50 watts or so. The ZMI thermals look very similar. This is at 100 watts of discharge. It gets warm, but not too warm. The charging power is a little higher, but basically linearly tapers from the beginning to the end, so you don't really get a fast boost of charge from this device. In terms of value, these end up on the lower end of the scale. These are expensive power banks. They have big claims for performance and they charge a premium for those extra features. The thing I don't like is those extra features are basically temporary or really just marketing tricks in some cases. 
These don't charge at the full rated speed. They don't discharge at the full rated speeds. They do technically meet the claims for charging for features, but they aren't full time features, so it's not so great. One advantage with both of these power banks is the non renegotiation of the outputs with the USB C ports. So these will stay on as long as you use the power. So, Onto the density chart. Another way to look at the data is the power density. And this is where, even if it's just a marketing number, these look great. I am looking at the energy and power densities of these power banks. The energy density is shown in two ways with both the weight and the physical size in liters. The higher the energy density, the better. The power density tells you how fast you can access that energy. These more expensive power banks stand out. You can charge them fast and you can discharge them fast. And apparently that costs money. Just a side note, these higher power density power banks also tend to be a lot more efficient than the slower charging ones. The big note here is that the marketing term max or maximum, meaning this is all based on short term capabilities. Small battery, lots of watts equals overheating every time. Okay, overall, again, this is mostly positive. The ZMI has a lot of power capability and has a lot of modes of operation. It still skimps on the PPS mode, but everything else looks pretty good. I would still not try to use this above 100 watts. That's really what it can do for full time without overheating or braking. Even still, and like the Anchor, on a 100 watt full discharge, they both need a break to cool down before they will be able to take charge again after a full discharge. When discharging at 50 watts, neither require this. So if you wanted a power bank that can charge, discharge all the time, then these are both really 50 watt power banks. But bigger number, more better, so 200 watts. That's the only real bad here, the overhyped numbers on the power capabilities. The ZMI unit is very efficient, the best one I have tested yet. And that shouldn't be too overshadowed by the Anchor, which is also very efficient. Both of these do a great job at delivering the majority of the stored energy to the device being powered. They both charge in a reasonable time, about one and a half hours to full charge, and they can both discharge in far less time than that. The value on both was not great. This is to be expected though, these are high power power banks so the cost goes up. In terms of features and functionality, the ZMI wins. I'll probably take the ZMI with me on a trip to beat it up and see how it does in the long term. Overall, I still kind of point to the Evertronic because it does not oversell its claims. The 60 watt met all the claims and functioned as expected, was efficient and cheap. I could buy three of those for the price of the ZMI, so even if one breaks, I still have a working power bank. The ZMI is the winner between the Anchors and even the Bassius power banks though. If you need reasonably fast charging, discharging, and want some extra features like the USB-A power delivery. Okay, these are tested and not yet on any database. I seriously have dreams that it's all done. I forgot the stickers too. Thanks for watching. Next week, the plan is to do more power adapters. I have yet more 100 watt adapters to check out and the quest for the 100 watt adapter has still not ended. This time, desktop edition. So check out the All Things website linked in the description for upcoming videos. And as always, I will see you in the comments section. Thanks again and goodbye.